So why multicultural worship, Josh? What what is the big deal? Is it just something that is like a fad that will come and go? Is it a way to keep millennials in the church? I mean, what is the big deal? What what compels us with multicultural worship? Yeah, I believe the bottom line is it's not my idea, it's not your idea, it's not the latest fad, but it's actually God's idea. Mm. Um, when I got the glimpse that is painted for us in the book of Revelation where John sees these people from every tribe and language gathered around the throne of God worshiping, same place, same time, not black church here, white church right. there, Hispanic church there, mm -hmm. but all together. Um, and then seeing that vision, hearing Jesus pray in the back of my head, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. For me, that's enough. Like, yeah. to realize that that's Jesus' idea, he cares about it, it matters to him, so I should move in that direction. Yeah, and what I love about what you just shared was the idea of what Jesus always does, which is, this is what matters to me, and I'm gonna show you a way to actually fulfill it. Mm. Like, he doesn't just say something and then kind of leave us yeah. out there, like, you know, I'll see you in heaven, good luck. You know, that he actually gives us a way, and he actually gives us a model even in that Revelation chapter 7 passage about how to actually do this so that we could actually see the, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living right here in our churches when there are people from all nations and there's a diverse environment. Yes, and it's actually possible here on earth. Yes. And one of the reasons it's actually possible is because of what we see in that model where Jesus is the centerpiece. That's right. We're not united around some musical style or mm -hmm. some form of preaching or even some great doctrine. We're not united around those things. We're united around Jesus, just like those people from every tribe and language in Revelation are, are united around Jesus. He's the unifier. Yes, and he's the cultural unifier. I mean, you know, here in our churches, if we choose one thing, one musical style or preaching style, then one culture group is the one that decided that. So. You know, who gets to choose, who gets to choose. Yes, and everyone else is left out. Absolutely. I mean, I remember when my husband and I were looking for a church and being an interracial couple, it was very difficult for us to find a space where we felt like we fit. And every place we went, we found that right there, that one of us would have to kind of give up our cultural identity mm -hmm. and even our preferences so that we could survive until we walked into a multicultural church, right. a diverse environment where we just felt like, oh, we can breathe, now we can be our, ourselves. And that's before we heard preaching or music or any other service element. Right. Yeah. So now that we've caught that vision, yes, we can walk towards it because we know that Jesus is praying for it, so he's gonna make a way for it. Yes. If it matters to him, yeah. then it should matter. It really should matter to us. Matter to us.